Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, friends and family, joining us from around the world on our live program here and there, our Ramadan special for 2017. In this program, we have two aims. We're number one, trying to increase our knowledge of Islam, trying to draw ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, as the title suggests, here and there, we are looking at different cultures, different customs. We're looking at different countries from around the world, how you spend your Ramadan, what food do you eat, what clothes do you wear, and what things do you do that are unique uh, to your countries. Furthermore, our topic today is a very unique topic, an important discussion. We find in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Allah says, orders us to worship one true God. And he says, do not commit shirk, do not associate partners with Allah. This is the fundamentals of our faith. And then after this command, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, then do good and righteousness to your parents to your friends and to your families the command for us to maintain our ties with our families our friends our society our neighbors is so powerful and so strong it's reiterated in the Quran in so many different places furthermore the Prophet Sallallahu he looked at his companions and he said to them shall I tell you something that if you did if you do you will enter into paradise from amongst us number one he said to spread the salam very simple. You see your friends, you see your family, you say assalamu alaikum. Number two, he said to feed the poor. And number three, which is our discussion for today, he said to maintain your ties. And number four, the Prophet ﷺ, he said to pray in the night when everybody else is asleep. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, we can see the importance of maintaining ties from the perspective of the hereafter. But even in this world, we see the wisdom behind this teaching that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to create a society, a strong society where each of us have strong bonds uh, with one another. A society that encourages people to goodness and pushes people away uh, from vice. This kind of society will create leaders, teachers, those people that can influence people in a positive way. So inshallah, we're going to be talking about the importance of having good ties and also how inshallah Ta'ala, we can maintain good ties with everybody, including those people that may be difficult uh, to maintain good ties with. Our phone lines are open, so please do join us with your questions and your suggestions as well. Our Skype account is also running, which is Huda underscore TV, so do join us on those two lines. Now let's go around the table and let's see who we have in the studio today, and then we can get straight into our discussion. If I can turn to my right to have with us my brother Omar, my co-presenter, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, brother Junaid. I'm really happy and pleased to be with you on this episode. And really like the way that you formed this, the beginning of this discussion by saying that the beginning is the uh, testimony about the oneness of God. And after this, the ahsana, the being and honoring your parents and so on and so forth. It's, I really like it. And I would yeah. like also to welcome our dear viewers to this new episode of Here and There. And I would like to say just one insight about uh, maintaining your ties and kinship with your relatives and so on. Um, in the beginning of humanity, when Allah created Prophet Adam, He created him, and Allah has all the power. He can make him in go inside the Jannah or Paradise alone. He can eat whatever he wants. He can go and sit around the rivers and so on and so forth. But Allah saw, of course, by His wisdom, that is not a complete life. You need to have somebody with you because you are a social being from the beginning. Allah created us like this. You cannot live alone. You need to be, like as Brother Junaid said, the strength of the society. But how can you have the strength of the society and you have just a very weak foundation inside your home? We cannot build a society just when we have like fractured homes and we try to look at the society and want to have ties with the whole uh, community. We start small and after this we go to the bigger and bigger picture. We're going to get into the details of this inshallah. And but before this, I would like also to introduce with us our co-presenter, Brother Ali, the news anchor. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ali. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, good evening, dear viewer. Thank you very much for being with us. And Brother Janae, thank you as always for an excellent introduction. Thank you very much. And Brother uh, Omar. Uh, tonight, our discussion, as the brothers have indicated, is about kinship. 
uh, very important for us to maintain relationships with the people on which we depend most and who most depend on us. Uh, we also, uh, in the introduction, heard from Janae that sometimes, uh, because we're human beings, uh, because we have faults and vices, there are complications to maintaining relationships. We hope to have an honest discussion, and we look forward to your uh, continued participation. Every, uh, for two weeks now, the past two weeks in this show, we've had uh, callers calling in, giving their, uh, uh, their great uh, questions, their great uh, comments, and we look forward to that to continue tonight. I'd like to introduce tonight's guest. Uh, that is uh, Sheikh Khalid Azhari. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to uh, the program. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among people who keep uh, ties of uh, their uh, relatives. Mm -hmm. Ameen, inshallah. Ameen. 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 Uh, Shaykh, if we can start right from the beginning, uh, can you please tell us uh, the importance, firstly, of maintaining the ties from the Quran and from the Sunnah? Yes, mashallah, um, uh, every Muslim should be proud of uh, being a Muslim. Mashallah, Islam. Uh, told us and advised Muslim to be so tender not only with their relatives. So let, uh, let me at first to explain what the uh, Salatul Rahim, the ties of kinship in Islam. So ulama said, the scholar said that kinship, the Rahim in Islam has three kinds. Number one, all Muslims mm. in general. Number two, special uh, Rahim, relatives, uh, from the parents and from uh, mother or uh, uh, father, like uncle, like aunt, and non-Muslim relatives. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and the every one of these kind has uh, some ayat and the uh, Quran telling us the importance of having good relationship with them. For example, at the first kind of uh, rahim, the all Muslims. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in chapter al-hujurat innama al-mu'minuna ikhwa all believers are nothing else brothers oh. and the rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said mathalu al-mu'minina fi tawadduhim wa tarahumihim all the believers in their mutual compassion sympathy uh, are just like one body okay. when one of its organs suffers the whole body responds in a full wakefulness and fever. Means the most Islam encourages Muslim to have good relationship with all the community, with all the members of the Ummah. Okay. The second kind, the Rahim, the special relatives like your father, your mother, your aunt, your uncle, your foster mother, your foster sister, your uh, cousin, your niece, your nephews. So. We have a lot of uh, ayat and uh, hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in chapter An-Nisa, and this verse Rasulullah sallallahu used to recite this verse in each khutbah, in khutbah al-hajj. And he mentioned this verse, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَى Fear Allah with whom you will ask, demand mutual rights and the relationship or the blood relationship. So means fear Allah and they keep ties in, uh, of uh, kinship uh, strong. So uh, maintain the ties of your rahim, of your kinship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said also in, uh, in another uh, ayah, uh, telling us the, the, the importance of uh, Salatul Rahim, فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ إِنْ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَنْ تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَتُقَطِّعُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ Allah says, would you then, if you were given the authority, do mischief in land and severe your ties of kinship? Means, be in tension. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you authority, <laughs> you have to keep in uh, ties of kinship, of rahim. You have uh, to have good relationship with uh, all members of the community, especially your uh, blood uh, relatives or your relatives. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is a hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana Allah, Ana al-Rahman, khalaqtu al-Rahim, wa shaqaqtu laha isman min ism. 
I am Allah, I am Rahman, the most merciful. I created a Rahim, that means the warmth, and I drive a name for it from my name. Okay. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised this promise. Whoever maintain the ties of kinship, Allah will keep his connections with him. Okay. And whoever severes the relationships, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will severe his connections with him. Means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him full guidance and full mercy. Okay, yes. Sheikh, I, I want to just ask a question here. Uh, is it then, is, is there a connection between maintaining ties and also your Iman? Of course. This is a sign of your strong Iman. If you have good Iman, if you have good Aqeedah, if you have good connections with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surely you will deal kindly with all people, especially your father, your mother, your aunt, your relatives. So this is it's a very important point if you want to measure your Iman. Okay. Yes. And uh, also the third kind of Rahim, uh, the non-Muslim relatives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in chapter in Mumtahina, La Mumtahina, La Yanhaakum Allahu an illadhina lam yuqatilukum fi al-deen wa lam yukhrujukum min diyarikum anta barroom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he, he doesn't forbid you from those who don't fight you because of religion and expel you from your, from your homes from being righteous to them, from dealing kindly with them, mm -hmm. and acting justly towards them. Because Allah loves those who act justly. Uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Khalid, can you, uh, I didn't catch the source of these uh, three categories. Where is this coming from? What's the origins of these? This is from understanding from the Quran and the Sunnah. The okay. ulama mm -hmm. summarizes this, mm -hmm. that you, we have uh, three kinds of connection with others. Yeah. Th this person, mm -hmm. maybe he is your brother in religion, in Islam. Of course. Yes. Or he is your relative. Mm -hmm. Or he is your relative, but he is not Muslim. What okay. should you do? <laughs> so mm -hmm. the ulama summarize this from their understanding from the Quran and the Sun. Okay, thank you. S so yeah. if, if somebody is asking now a question that he doesn't want to sever his relationship, and he's wondering, or she is wondering, am I really severing my relationship with my kinship? So how to have like a criterion of this? Like, to, like what actions are required from me to do to maintain the ties with my relatives? I have uh, some practical steps if you wanted to maintain your <laughs> uh, uh, ties of kinship. Number one, you have to know your relatives. You ask about mm -hmm. your relatives. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I don't know my cousins. I, I just I know my uncle, my, my mom, my father. So number one, <laughs> ask your father, your mom, about your relatives. Mm -hmm. So you, you normally find uh, those hidden uncles and aunties in the weddings. <laughs> <laughs> so you, <laughs> you experience your relatives. Yes. And uh, number two, you have to have their con con uh, contacts. Mm -hmm. So I ask about their names, their addresses, and now, mashallah, we have Facebook, Twitter, we have WhatsApp, so I collect this. Mm -hmm. Number three, you have to make interview with your mom or with your dad or with, uh, or with your uncle, especially if they are um, uh, old, very old. And if you tape this or record this, you will be so happy after that, after their death. Unfortunately, my dad, I had a lot of interviews with them, but without recording this. <laughs> so I, I, I wish if I had uh, some record from uh, him. Number three, uh, uh, number four, visiting them. Okay. Try to visit them. Number uh, four, uh, try to solve old issues, the old mm -hmm. problems. Uh, try to, to, to get rid of any problems mm -hmm. in any obstacles. Mm -hmm. Sheikh, if I can ask you just to hold your thought there, we've got a phone call, we'll take this and then we'll, okay. we'll come back. We have with us Brother Ayman from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello, brother Darjanid, how are you? I'm good, yourself? Yes, I, alhamdulillah, I'm fine. I would like to talk about relatives and how to be near to them. Yeah, go ahead, them. please. Yes, when you be near to your family, even if someone is married or unmarried, he has to call them on the phone and make sure that they are Okay, and they are in good health. Uh, God says in the Quran, Don't be rude to them or don't tell, tell them uh, things that they don't like. 
also you have to be always be in touch with your family whether it's your auntie or your grandfather or your mother and father that's uh, what uh, religion told us to do and that's what uh, makes the life get more and uh, and become more long thank you very much Thank you very much, Brother Eamon, for your phone call. And dear viewers around the world, please do pick up your phones and do join us on Skype and give us your contribution on the topic as well. I really would like to know some personal stories. If somebody can really pick up the phone and tell us how they managed to connect ties with someone who they were cut off. Maybe they didn't speak to their parents for a long time, their brothers and sisters for a long time, but they built up that courage and they were able to reconnect those ties. Call us, tell us your story, please. We really want to hear it. Uh, Sheikh, before we go back to you, I want to turn to, to, to the pair of you here. Um, you know, one of the ways in which we can reconnect our ties, like the Sheikh said, very modern way, and that's through social media. The Sheikh mm -hmm. said through Facebook or Twitter or those kind of things. How practical and how easy is it now for us what? to make use of these things? I, I was about to ask, I wanted to ask Sheikh Khaled, is it enough for us to, to do this? And no, just no, it is, it is one of the practical steps. Uh -huh. For example, now my, uh, if I have my uh, relative in Alexandria or in America, or in, so it's uh, very easy to uh -huh. have video chat uh, group on WhatsApp or something like this. But this is, is not uh, enough to uh, say, oh, I, I called them. Because we have the methods of maintaining the ties of kinship. So you mean, Sheikh by this, if they are far away, but if yes. my parents or my relatives are living maybe in the same city, and at least I can go to them maybe every month or Of course, or so and it, this also depends on them. to use social media. Mm -hmm. But uh, wouldn't you uh, agree that uh, it's, it's, it's a great start? Yeah. Um, you know, previously before Facebook or social media, I, I, the main relatives I didn't see. Mm -hmm. But now they actually add you and request friends and then they send you pictures. So you actually, it's a, it's a good beginning. Yes. And also it depends on their needs. Mm. For example, if um, I, I have a cousin or a nephew or a niece, so I j just I check her status by phone. Mm. But if my mom or my uncle uh, or my aunt needs me, ha she or he has any medical problems, so I have to go. So the ulama said, so it depends on the situations. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's by visiting, sometimes it's by advising, sometimes it's by greeting them, sometimes it's by uh, helping them in medical situations, something like this. So it depends on situations. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. That, that was, I really appreciate that question. You know, what are the basic requirements of us mm -hmm. as Muslims in terms of maintaining uh, relationships with our kin? And the Sheikh has uh, given us uh, some guidelines to follow. Uh, so uh, what I'm sensing is um, one of the purposes of this is uh, the Islamic social security system. Mm -hmm. uh, in the United States, we have a social security where all employee uh, working people uh, pay a portion of their wages. The government collects them and distributes it to people who are not able to work for various reasons. The b before this, what did we do in Islam? Well, now I'm discovering that uh, mm -hmm. maintaining relationships uh, achieves that. You know, checking on those, uh, the status, their health, what are their needs, and uh, being a part of a network to provide for the people who, in, who are in need. Uh, and so, to, to, uh, just to add to that as well, Brother Andy, you come from the States, w would you say that having that strong social network, uh, is that present in the States amongst the people there, or is that non-existent? When you look at the um, different, uh, uh, if you look at the spectrum of, uh, of uh, cultures around the world, uh, the United States and generally e European countries as well uh, tend to be more individualistic That's right. than those in uh, different parts of Africa and Asia. Uh, people can go a long time without seeing uh, uh, near relatives and it's reduced to a phone call uh, and then hopefully, I mean in the best case scenario, you might see your relatives once a year. Mm. Okay. Uh, but uh, things have changed, especially over the past three decades. It used to be that uh, when you got a job, you would be, you know you would get a twenty or thirty year mortgage, and you would be in that city, the same city, for mm -hmm. twenty or thirty years. But now people are very mobile. They may work with a corporation, work with government, and they're moving you know every three to five years. Okay. And so that also adds a, a layer of complexity. So it's a very different uh, dynamic. There there are things that complicate you know maintaining relationships. And, and also, I think Brother Jeanette, correct me if I'm wrong, that also the marriage itself starting from the marriage itself now, it's not becoming so sacred like before in the United States. Mm. Right. You know, it's, we've talked about this uh, in the first week of the show, mm. uh, the, 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 the differ differences 
in how easy it is in the United States for young people to get married. Mm -hmm. Once you reach the age of 18, you know, a young person can go and get married to whoever they want mm -hmm. without their parents' involvement. Okay. okay. They can just go, they can meet someone mm -hmm. one weekend on a great weekend, and the next day they're married, legally married. But uh, it's a very different thing in Islam. I mean, it requires the family's involvement, mm -hmm. uh, and there are certain protections that are built into that. Right. Not only, we have to say this also, over the past decade in the United States, we've seen an increase in same-sex marriages. Mm. Okay. So you could be an 18, 19, 20-year-old, go and marry a same-sex person without your parents' involvement. Mm. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is another uh, uh, a great difference between the situation in the, in the United States and the Islamic standards. All right. Thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, Sheikh, you, I think you were on point number three or four on how we can... Uh, build uh, s ties with our friends and, uh, and families? I, yes, we mentioned to ask about your relatives, collect their contacts, uh, try to set up a uh, video chat or gr a WhatsApp group and uh, visit them and uh, uh, support them financially if they need and uh, try to solve the old issues. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, be away and say, oh, uh, uh, I, it's not my business. No, it's your business to solve these problems, to collect all members of the family. It's your business to please Allah. Do you know when you uh, maintain the ties of kinship, your major sin will be forgiven? Wow, this is one of the importance of maintaining the ties of kinship, <laughs> that your major sins will be forgiven. Uh, uh, a Bedouin came to Rasulullah and he said, oh, Rasulullah, I did a major sin. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't say anything except, he said, is your mother alive? Mm. He said, no. He said, is your aunt alive? He said, yes. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may peace be upon him. Treat her kindly. Wow. Just, he didn't say anything except to treat, deal with her kindly. So this is one of to uh, for uh, the reasons of bringing forgiveness to us is to deal kindly with our rahim with our relatives okay number two in salatul uh, uh, rahim maintaining the ties of kinship increases your wealth and expand uh, and in, uh, extend your age okay rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said من سره أن يبسط له في رزقه أو ينسأ له في أثره فليصر رحمه Whoever is pleased with expanding his risk, his sustenance and extending his age he should keep or maintain ties of kinship Does that mean if I'm going to live like for 40 years and I maintain the ties I'm going to live for 60 years? This is a very good point The ulama said how can we understand that? If everything is written or was written, so how can uh, maintaining the ties of kinship will increase or extend my age? Imam al Nawa mentioned in his amazing book, Sharh, Explanation of uh, a Muslim, he said, we have two explanations. This means that Allah will send barakah, mm -hmm. blessings, so you can do a lot of work in short time. Okay. Or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write, down your age provided mm. and Allah put a condition for example this person w uh, will live 70 years if he mm. maintains the ties of his kinship okay otherwise he will live 60 for example mm. so Allah put condition so we have two explanations of this <laughs> and the Rasulullah in amazing hadith he mentioned something very very important he said Silatul Rahim wa husnul jiwar wa husnul khuluq means maintaining the ties of kinship and having good manners and uh, dealing kindly with neighbors mm -hmm. means increase baraka in your house and extend your age so how can salatul rahim or dealing kindly with neighbors put baraka in our house because will this will protect you from uh, envy or uh, your neighbor envy you or from uh, 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 bad feeling against you from your neighbor or backbiting so this is is uh, a good 
advice from Rasulullah Sallallahu to protect your house. Sheikh, we've got another phone call, so let's take <laughs> this and then we will come back. We have with us Brother Muhammad calling us from Gambia. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa my brother. How are you, Muhammad? My question was, if you are born, you if you are born and your mother and your father, you meet that they don't get you in the Islam way, like you are born and you are a Muslim, your mother and your father, they get you in, in like uh, like uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, and you are a Muslim. What did the Muslim? What did the Islam talk about that? Uh, sorry, uh, Brother Muhammad, uh, can you repeat your question again, but a bit slower? So you're born Muslim, and the problem is with your parents. What's the problem there? Okay, looks yeah, like that if you are born, you are a Muslim. That your mother and your father they don't get you in the normal way. Okay, I got you. Okay. <laughs> All right, Muhammad. Thank you very much for your yeah. phone call there. Uh, so, Brother Muhammad is, is saying that if a child is born out of wedlock, I see. Mm -hmm. um, if he's born out of an adulterous relationship, mm. um, then does he still have to keep ties with his mother and his father? Interesting. It's a very good question. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. uh, we divided people to into three categories. All Muslims are your brothers, so even he doesn't consider them z uh, their as their uh, as his relatives. So consider them as uh, brothers and sisters in Islam. Hmm. But even he, uh, she, uh, his mother did something wrong or something. She is still his mother, hmm. and Islam commanded Muslims to deal kindly with their parents, even though they are non-Muslim. Hmm. The only condition. When they command you to do something wrong or disobey Allah, don't obey them, but still deal with them kindly. Mm -hmm. So, Sheikh, uh, I got the I got the point of uh, dealing with your that person's mother uh, correctly, even though he was born outside of marriage. Outside of marriage, but does he have to maintain the same relationship with his father as well? Yes, because uh, if they commit something wrong. You, as you, their sons, it's not your responsibility to uh, ask them about their sins. This is for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah command you to deal with them kindly. Okay. Yes? And the on, as I mentioned, the only condition is they fight you to uh, make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the only thing that you disobey them. But you are still commanded from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be gentle with them, to deal kindly with them, to support them financially if they need this. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I, I would like to, sorry, Brother Jade, we want to come back to the point <laughs> <laughs> just Sheikh Khalid was talking about, like extending the life and so on. I just wanted to make sure if this is the right reference or not, if I say this. One of the verses, So that means the same meaning of this hadith, that maybe if you make istighfar and tawbah, that Allah is going to make you enjoy like His, his blessings life. and it's, you are going to be delayed until like uh, a later time that means this is the condition that you were talking about like uh, what yes. Imam Nawi was saying uh, Allah, Allah will give you good feeling with uh, things around you because it is sometimes people have hmm. uh, 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 a lot of money but they don't feel happy hmm. so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> is pleased with you or uh, and you content with Allah and Allah con uh, is content with you. Mm -hmm. So this means that Allah will impl uh, will uh, grant you the true happiness in your heart. Mm -hmm. And if you make istighfar, this means that you remove and uh, 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 prevent any obstacles from uh, your walking to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Mm -hmm. So this means that you will feel you you will taste the sweetness of this life. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sheikh, on that note, we're going to have to take a break. We're going to go watch a report, then when we come back, we'll continue with the discussion. So, dear viewers, we're going to watch a report on the topic of maintaining our ties. And I would like for you to think about something. The Sheikh mentioned uh, that if a person wants to elongate, if that's correct to say, his life, or if he wants to have more wealth, more riches, then there's something that he must do. If you can, after watching the report, pick up your phones and tell me what was that one thing, I'll be very grateful. Let's watch this report, and then we will come back after uh, in a few moments. In his name we die, here and there. Everyone's life in this world is shaped by many factors. But the most essential factor is the family. The family is the basic unit in the society structure. 
All social ideas and theories aim for stable and connected families. The Muslim family model is one of the greatest societal models in the world. The Islamic teachings in the Quran and the Sunnah encourage marriage and in the same time they forbid any relationship between a man and a woman outside the bond of marriage. Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The best of you is the one who is best to his wife and I am the best of you to my wives. This means that the best Muslim is the one who treats his or her family kindly. Islam also encourages the husband and the wife to have children and Allah commanded the children to obey their parents. Muhammad, peace be upon him, has ordered parents to take care of their children and treat them with mercy and love. Furthermore, Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said, Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should maintain his kinship ties. This strengthens the ties between all families in the Muslim society. As you see, the Muslim family model is the best way to create a perfect family for a great society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O oh you who believe, that's you. Allah is talking to you. Save yourself and save your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones. The fuel of the fire of Jahannam is human beings and rocks and stones. The fire of Jahannam feeds off human beings. When you have a fire, you go to a camp, for example, and you build a campfire, you throw wood into it so the wood can continue to burn. That's the fuel. You're throwing in the wood. The fire of Jahannam's fuel is human beings that they're thrown into the fire of Jahannam making it more and more hot and more severe. But when we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu to start off with, we see a beautiful example through the hadith that are narrated by the scholars of hadith. The majority of the most detailed hadith, the intricate details, especially with regards to husband and wife and relations and stuff like that, family relations, those hadith are usually narrated or came from their source goes back to one of the family members either a wife of the Prophet or a cousin or an uncle or a relative or a really close friend a father-in-law you know whoever it may be but it goes back to someone usually or a lot of the times those hadith go back to someone who is very close and related to the Prophet and that in itself is an example of how the Prophet ﷺ maintained close ties with those who were related to him. Maintained close ties and relations with those family members. And not only was it maintaining close ties, but it was educating them about the religion. It was educating them. But today we see a lot of us are kind of two-faced. When we're outside of our house, people look at us and they're like, MashaAllah, you know, really good brother, wish I was like him, look at him, he's going off to the masjid, would love to be like that brother, MashaAllah, sister, look at that one, she's walking by, SubhanAllah, she's covered up, you know, her hijab matches her abaya and it covers up nicely and it looks good, and like our brother was saying yesterday, it's nice and loose and she's wearing the converse shoes, you know, and everything's nice. But when you go home, attitude. Don't talk to me like that. What's wrong with you? You know? Wife's telling the husband, hmm, talk to the hen. <laughs> and then the husband is like, do this, do that. Where's my food? Bring it down. Hurry up. I'm waiting. I came home from work. It's been five minutes now. You didn't get me my food. But at work, it's like, oh, we have a meeting over lunch, so we're going to eat lunch at 3 o'clock today instead of on time at 12.30 because we have a lunch meeting. Okay, no problem, sir. That's fine. Yeah, no problem. But at home's like, where's my food? You know? We're two-faced. We're two different people. When we're outside, people recognize us as being someone who's amazing and awesome for some of us. And then when we go home, we're a completely different person. 
The husband is like, what's wrong with this lady? She's outside with her friends. She gets dressed up nicely. She puts on makeup. She goes and, you know, has a nice time with her friends and everything. She comes home, puts on her pajamas, takes off the makeup. What? I mean, it's simple examples, but it really changes the state of your house and the situation of the relationship between husband and wife and mother and father and brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts and so on and so forth. And in his name we die. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to viewers after watching those two reports there talking about maintaining our ties. Prior to the report, I put out a question to you. So what are the two, what is that one thing that you could do if you want to elongate your life or if you want to gain more riches, more wealth? What's that one thing you must do in order to, uh, to do that? The answer is very simple. So do pick up your phones, do join us on Skype as well and engage with us on the program. Uh, Sheikh, so now in this next 15-20 minutes that we have left of the program, uh, I would like to look at some further practical ways in which we can possibly maintain ties. But before we get into that, Sheikh, I want to ask a question that uh, how practical is it to maintain ties with people that maybe you don't get along with? Mm -hmm. And if you do try, maybe actually things will get actually worse. Hmm. So you are asking about... Somebody you visit him and he deal you badly. He doesn't like you, ah, and when he sees you, he gets even more angry. Mm -hmm. So how do you connect the ties? S somebody came to Rasulullah. Rasulullah, S Rasulullah will answer you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody came to Rasul Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, maybe speak upon him, and said, "Oh Rasulullah, I have relatives. I visit them, but they dislike me. I am gentle with them, and they are." rough and tough with me and I give them money support them financially but they dislike me or and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said if you said the truth Allah will support you forever and you as a person who feed them the hot ash <laughs> so means that by your good relationship with them you let them commit a lot of sins mm. because they refuse this mm. goodness from you mm. and uh, when you deal with them for the sake of Allah this is the best uh, maintaining of ties okay. because Rasulullah says لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمُكَافِئِ means wasil a person who mean, tries to maintain the ties of his kinship. So if you visit me because I visited you, so you are not wasil. Mm -hmm. You are mukafi. Means you give me a gift because I gave you a gift. So this is not a person that Rasulullah wants from us. Uh, Rasulullah wants to visit those people who are away from us. Mm -hmm. We love people who dislike us because this is a test that you do this for the sake of Allah. <laughs> not because you return favor or you uh, make something good because he, uh, re you recompense him or reward him because he does, did something good with you. So this is very important point. Maintaining the ties of kinship for the sake of Allah means don't, don't care of <laughs> the reaction of the other people. <laughs> Be tender with them even though they are rough. Okay. Yes. So, so what about if like somebody used to visit his sister or her sister or her brother and because they harm me so much I swore by God that I'm not going to visit them again. No. So <laughs> what should I do in this situation? Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu said Allah's messenger may peace be upon him said man nadhara an yuti'a Allah falyuti'a wa man nadhara an ya'sihi fala ya'si. Whoever vows to obey Allah let him obey Allah. <laughs> and whoever vows to disobey Allah don't disobey Allah and uh, try to do uh, make uh, kafara means to fast three days or something like that to uh, make uh, like uh, compensation compensation of the of, of, of the uh, vows yeah. so this means if you uh, swore or you vows that you will not visit this uh, your sister no break your oath and mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and visit her and make a stighfar and Allah will forgive you. And this is the advice of Rasulullah yes. I want to uh, come um, to some practical 
uh, elements. Uh, Brother Ali, I would get, like to get your thoughts on this as well. Mm. Is that uh, you know when we talk about maintaining ties, mm. uh, it's very easy. To, yes. to say maintain ties. But in the real world, if you have, you know, every single person has problems with somebody. That's a, yeah, that's a fact. That's right. Every family has issues with another family. That's a fact. How can we in the real world actually try to reconnect with those people that we are broken away from? Even if we are the ones who are oppressed. Hmm. I, I think it's uh, based on what the Sheikh was saying. Like if we imagine the reward, I, the first time I know that in my life that maintaining the ties, it can wipe out the major sins. Okay. Well, it, it encouraged me, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. even if somebody is oppressing me, I, at least I'm going to try to, to, to just maintain mm -hmm. the ties because it's a very big reward. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's going to wipe out the major sins. What about the, the minor sins then? So thinking about how much I'm going to get mm -hmm. in this life and the hereafter, it's going to be an encouragement and a push for me to do so. Okay, mm -hmm. very nice. Uh, Sheikh Hulsa, wha what's the reality of uh, connecting with, with somebody who has genuinely wronged you? Uh, what do I mean by that is somebody, for example, maybe he has murdered someone in my family. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he has stolen from me. He has come into my house and he has taken my wealth. Am I, do I still have to have uh, relations with this person? Provided uh, bringing harm upon you. So, for example, if this person uh, visit you and they stole your money, or for example, mother-in-law, if you visit you and they make problems with mm -hmm. your wife, uh, or if your sister, when you visit you, something like this, keep um, uh, the ties and, and they maintain the ties, but in okay, yes. we've got a phone call. Sheikh. We'll come back to <laughs> maintain the ties. We have with us Brother Musa from Gambia, mashallah. Salamu alaikum, Brother Musa. Brother Musa, switch your television off and talk to me over the phone. Give me your question or your comment, please. Yeah, hello. Okay, I'm getting it clear. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, brother. Go ahead. Mm. Sorry. Oh dear. Uh, it looks like, mashallah, today Gambia is awake and joining us with a number of phone calls. So, Brother Musa, continue, please. Pick up your phone and do join us. But do f remember that don't talk to us through the pho uh, television. There is a delay. Switch your TV off and talk to us over the phone. Uh, sorry, Sheikh, you, you're saying? Yes, I, I, I want to say it uh, maintaining the ties. Uh, it has different levels. So, if this person make problems in my life, avoid this problem by avoid. For example, it's it's not necessary to invite him to my house, but I can visit him, or I can call him, or I can send uh, money to him if if he needs this. So this I I I have to protect my family and my house mm. with keeping the ties strong. Okay. Uh, Sheikh, that leads me to my next question. Uh, what's the minimum, mm -hmm. the least I have to do with somebody for in order for me to say in front of Allah that I kept my relation with him? It depends on the degree of his relatives. For example, if your mom, so you have to do wha whatever she asks from you as long as she uh, doesn't ask you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if, this he, if he or she is for example, your cousin or your friend or something like this, the minimum to say salam, uh, to uh, ask him, uh, to congratulate him on Eid or something like this. It depends on the level of re relatives and the levels of his or her necessity. Okay, excellent. It makes it's, more it's, sense, right? It, it's an important question because okay. I think uh, people who find themselves in these complicated relationships, they want to be good Muslims. They want to do what's right. But at the same time, they're human beings, and especially if they're wrong, it can be difficult to overcome and do what's right as a Muslim. So, so these are great uh, things that you're telling us, Sheikh, and thank you for sharing it. Um, what it says is, it's very much like uh, the standard that our Prophet, peace be upon him, set about being wronged, when, even when you're offended. And it's very clear, as clear as the sun that you're the one offended, uh, there's still some requirements that, that are upon us. And the best illustration of this of all for me, one of the most touching stories from uh, the Prophet's life, peace be upon him, is um, when he traveled to make dawah to uh, the city of uh, Ta'if. Right. Yeah. And that whole uh, scenario of w what his response was after he had been beaten and left for dead it was just so much compassion, so much mercy, so much love uh, as a, the, the standard for us uh, uh, whenever we are wrong and it's very clear that we've been wrong. 
Mm. And he, he said as well to, uh, he was given the option of, uh, uh, like gave him the option of destroying these people. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, leave them because maybe in the future there will be some good from them. Yeah. It's because Islam teaches us to deal with Allah, not with people. Mm -hmm. So this is if you put Allah in front of you, so regardless the reaction of people, you will keep dealing them kindly. And we have a lot of stories of Rasulullah and a lot of stories of the Quran. Do you know Sahib Yasin, the story of uh, Yasin? Uh, th this person is uh, a da'i, uh, a color, Islamic color. He came to support the three messengers, Allah's messengers. And he was uh, a carpenter. He is a simple man. And he, he invited them for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, obey the, the, the Allah's messengers. He hasn't enough knowledge. Just he said, obey the Allah's messengers. But they killed him. Okay. And the, uh, even after his death, Allah told us in the Quran about his hopes in, in the hereafter. He said, oh Allah, return me back to tell my people about your Jannah. <laughs> the ulama said, we never saw a person a da'i to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like this uh, man. Mm -hmm. He loves people even though they kill them. Subhan Subhanallah. So when you deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of you, mm -hmm. you will deal kindly with people, we will be gentle with others, mm -hmm. even though they are rough or tough or they deal badly mm -hmm. with you. Or now, at the same time, we have to qualify this and be honest mm -hmm. and fair to those who are in these family situations. It's one thing to be a passerby in the street and to meet a stranger who offends you. Maybe you'll never see them again in your life. But if it's a family member, and you're close to them. Maybe you live under the same roof. It, it, it's a bit. It's a diff. It's not the same thing. It can be like an abuse or something like this. So yeah. it's, it's not easy. Yeah. It's not. Diff it's not easy to overlook. Is what e e the, the challenge is, is greater mm. uh, to do the right thing if you find yourself in one of these complex, complicated, problematic relationships. And uh, we. Uh, yeah. And uh, just to add to that as well, I think Sheikh, you can uh, correct me as well. Is that even the time of the Prophet uh, there were people who offended the Prophet uh, like for example, uh, Wahsh, who mm -hmm. killed his uncle, mm -hmm. and uh, he's and afterwards he came back and repented to the Prophet uh, and the Prophet accepted his repentance. But he said, "Don't come in front of me." Yeah, yeah that's what I told you. Because when you come, I, I remember uh, my uncle. Uh, yes, protect your family, protect your home, protect your heart, but keep uh, dealing them uh, kindly. Mm -hmm. So Rasulullah he said, "Don't let me see you again." But mm -hmm. Rasulullah he didn't harm him, he didn't sure. kill him, mm -hmm. because he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because Rasulullah he has feeling against this, he said, don't let me to see you again. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so yes. maybe this is difference between the feelings and the action. Like, mm -hmm. I yes, have because to you can't, you can't control them. your feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can. We're you can not, forgive, but you can't forget, right? We're, right. we're <laughs> not robots. <laughs> we're not machines. <laughs> On mm. that note, uh, we have come to the end, Sheikh. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to stop there. But just before I go, very quickly, Brother Omar and uh, Brother Ali, mm. uh, one quick way in Ramadan. Uh, you know, people got severed ties. What's that one action they can do at the, at the tip of your mm. tongue? Well, do the minimum, <laughs> as the Sheikh said. If uh, we can use Facebook or Twitter or send a message, okay. uh, I think it's going to have an impact, inshallah. Excellent. Thank you, Brother Ali. What's but that one thing? Well, uh, not necessarily an answer to your question, but something that uh, occurred to me uh, recently is that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the iftar and the suhoori meals nice. to bring the families together. Excellent. The other times of the year, maybe everyone's eating in a different room in the house, mm. right? But uh, Allah is giving us what the standard is. We should be, without the TV, <laughs> sitting together and enjoying each other. Excellent. Uh, I really like that one. Uh, and uh, be careful. Uh, we said use uh, modern uh, uh, communications, but when we are sitting together, don't <laughs> use <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> you <laughs> use Facebook <laughs> to uh, be in touch with people far away. Yeah. But when <laughs> I, I, I like that as a great, quick uh, disclaimer because otherwise mm -hmm. the viewers will say that Sheikh said right. I can use my own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, we're going to have to conclude. Uh, th Sheikh, thank you very yeah, much for coming. Uh, uh, Omar, Brother Ali, thank you very much as well. Uh, dear viewers, we've come to the end of our program here, here and there. What a beautiful discussion about maintaining our ties. I would like to make mention of two things there before we conclude. The first is the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here taught us in a very, very beautiful hadith that on the day when there is no shade and we will stand in front of Allah and everybody will be sweating according to their sins. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there are seven people that will be saved from the heat of the sun. And one of those, the 
Prophet ﷺ said is the one who loves his fellow brother not for any worldly reason, not for an agenda, but purely for the sake of Allah. He goes and visits him because he loves him. And he comes and visits him because he loves him. Then these two people on that day will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first thing. The second thing is the fact that unfortunately we hear many times stories of people who are disconnected, not just with their relatives or friends, but they are disconnected with their parents. And Allah, this is a tragedy. It's a catastrophe that you are disconnected with your mother and your father. Your mother and your father, be they Muslim or non-Muslim, they are your gateway to Jannah, a direct door into Jannah. If you are disconnected from your parents, even if they've wronged you, like the Sheikh said, then we must become active, proactive, and really start to engage with them and try to rebuild that relationship once again. Dear viewers, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you hopefully tomorrow on our program. And we have lots of interesting discussions as well. We're going to have a discussion on Indonesia as well this week. So do stay tuned. Uh, we will see you tomorrow, inshallah. So until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. His name we live and in his name we die here and there our souls prostrate to their creator with humbleness and piety and creatures do zikr all the time here and there humans are come on the Kaaba while migrating birds stretch forth their wings, finding their way by Allah mercy here and there. Our Prophet advised us to travel, seeking knowledge, while exploring Allah's miraculous creations here and there. La 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 la.